Today I'd like to share with you a book that I used to enjoy reading to my boys when they were little quite some time ago. And it is called Septimus Bean and His Amazing Machine, written by Janet Quinn Harkin and pictures by Art Cummings. Back in the days of King Albert III, there arrived at the palace, as maybe you've heard, a strange-looking man who was both long and lean. He went by the name of Septimus Bean, and he came with a strange and amazing machine. It was terribly long and incredibly high, and it seemed from the ground to reach up to the sky. It had wheels, it had bells, it was painted bright blue. But King Albert asked, Septimus, what does it do? So Septimus pulled on a huge heavy switch. The machine gave a rumble, a choke, and a twitch. Wheels started to spin, belts started to run, and steam valves shot off with a noise like a gun. Flags waved in the breeze, all gears took to churning. Cog wheels kept turning and turning and turning. The whole machine shook with a horrible shake. But King Albert just asked, Septimus, what does it make? Then Septimus bowed and he answered quite slow, I regret, good King Al, that I don't rightly know. I'm sure it is useful one way or another, but what it can do, I've yet to discover. Then in rushed the queen, Petronella by name, crying, Children, see here, what a lovely new game. What is it, my dear? She asked the king. We're not really sure what to do with the thing, said King Albert III. Its use is not clear. Have you any brilliant suggestions, my dear? Perhaps it cleans floors with that long, funny hose that looks quite a lot like an elephant's nose, said the queen. It would save us time on our chores if we used it instead of a broom to sweep floors. So the king nodded over to Septimus Bean, who pulled on the hose and turned on the machine. A great blast of air came out with a whoosh, and a tapestry sailed off the wall with a swoosh, sending statues and goblets and coronets flying, and all of the princesses running off crying. Stop, stop, cried the queen as she flew down the room. I'd rather sweep floors by myself with a broom. Then sweet Princess Primrose, the youngest of all the king's seven daughters, skipped into the hall. She took one close look, she needed no other, and whispered some words in the ear of her mother. The princess suggests to me, Mr. Bean, that you have invented a washing machine, said the queen. We shall try this idea of my daughter. Bring laundry and soap, fill the barrel with water. So into the barrel went blouses and dresses and stockings and skirts of the seven princesses. Then they all waited and listened to squeak and to plop, till at last the machine slowly ground to a stop. As she took out the dripping wet clothing, the queen shouted, Look! The machine worked! The clothes are all clean! Until she saw everything happened to shrink five sizes too small and was spotted with pink. Alas, I don't think Mr. Bean, said the queen that this is a truly good washing machine. Then King Albert grinned widely. He had an idea. He said, it's becoming increasingly clear that this thing has a seat and can move all its wheels. Let us drive it a little and see how it feels. Mr. Bean, take your bright blue invention outside. It may make a fine coach upon which I can ride. It may go many miles in just one single day, and it will not get tired, and it will not eat hay. He was all set to start it up when up rushed the queen, crying, Please, leave the driving to Septimus Bean. Remember, my dear, that you are a king, and to drive your own coach is not the right thing. So Septimus climbed up, all eager to please. He pulled on the switch, the machine gave a sneeze, and a snort, and a cough, and a bang like a gun, then it shuddered and juddered and started to run. It works! 
Yes, it goes. Yes, it's moving, they all cried. And the princesses hurriedly stepped to the side as it rumbled toward them, gathering speed. Now stop, Mr. Bean. We have seen all we need, cried the king, but in vain. The machine wouldn't slow, called the king with a large, My! How fast it can go! Raise the drawbridge at once before poor Mr. Bean rushes out and away and is never more seen. Then the drawbridge rose up to slow down the machine, speeding madly along with poor Septimus Bean. Up went the machine, never slowing at all, while the people below held their breath for its fall. But instead it soared up, and gently it flew out over the park as a small speck of blue. Then the king danced a jig. He threw his arms around the king, queen, shouting, This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Who would have guessed that this Septimus Bean had invented a wonderful flying machine? Bring my coach, get the horses, send soldiers and bands. We must honor this man when he finally lands. Then out went the king and his court to the park, and they waited and searched until it grew almost dark. What can become of our poor Septimus Bean? Has he flown off to Africa? worried the queen. Then at last came the news, very sad, very grim. The machine had been found, but with no traces of him. They rushed to the scene. What a sad, sorry sight. There were bits of machines scattered left, scattered right. The king stood and looked at the torn up machine and he sighed. What an ending, Deceptimus Bean. Then there came a faint voice. It was too dark to see. I'm not ended, King Al. I'm up here in this tree. Next morning they went, sadly, back to the green, where in twenty-two parts lay the broken machine. Septimus Bean looked it over and sighed. It's hopeless, he said, and the princesses cried. You'll soon build another, I'm sure, said the queen. You'll fly through the air once more, Mr. Bean. But Septimus shook his head sadly and said, The world must now wait, for I'm going to bed. I'll never more try to invent a machine. You can all just forget about Septimus Bean. But as Septimus turned and walked sadly away, from behind came the laughter of children at play, and there were princesses out on the green, climbing over the bits of fallen machine. Look, mother, look, father, the princesses cried. We can swing, we can climb, we can seesaw and glide. Come back, oh, come back, called the king and the queen. You've invented a playground, Septimus Bean, and what could be nicer to visit each day than a place you've invented for children to play? Then the people were called from each village and town, and the king read a speech that was all written down. I name this Bean Park. It's a fine place to play, where each child in my kingdom may come any day. And we owe this playground to Septimus Bean, who flew through the air in a flying machine. This park is dedicated to Septimus Bean, who flew through the air in a flying machine. The end. Well, may you have colorful dreams, happy thoughts, and people who love you just the way you are. Till next time.